Mm, so you're ready to drink some hot coffee or tea and it's too hot. So what's the best way to cool it down? Well, I know one way with liquid nitrogen. But let's say you don't have liquid nitrogen. What do you think will work best of the three things here? Either stir it around or like kind of lift the liquid up and down like this or the good old just blow the liquid. I don't know either what's best, but we'll find out soon, so have fun and guess with me. For reference, this is the temperature as a function of time for a cup of coffee standing at room temperature. I did a 300 IQ study and found that the best temperature of coffee is in the range of 45 and 60 degrees Celsius. So what would be faster than doing nothing shown here on the upper left corner? Will it be blowing on the coffee? Or will it be lifting the coffee? Or will it be stirring? Also, a fair warning, this isn't a scientific test. I didn't even account for uncertainties and I couldn't keep every variable constant. So before showing the results, let's talk about the mechanics of heat transfer. First, there's radiation. Every object emits energy in the form of electromagnetic waves. At hot temperatures, this is visible light like the sun or this hot burned wood. At lower temperatures, you can't see this radiation. For example, the body emits radiation in the form of infrared, so you'll need a filter to see it, like in this really cool music video. But for our test, there's very little energy loss, so radiation is not important. Next, there's evaporative cooling. That's when the system loses heat because the water is vaporizing. It happens because molecules collide all the time, and so at a given time, they will have a random speed, as shown in this animation. The number of particles with a different speed will be given by a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, as seen here. Only the molecules with the highest speed and at the boundary can escape the boundary force and take heat out of the system. It's the same mechanism that cools you off while sweating and it's the same mechanism that cools you off after taking a shower. So you know it's very effective. Next up is convection. When some part of the liquid is hotter or cooler, it has a different density and that will cause a movement in the liquid. Convection will therefore mix the temperature in the coffee but also the temperature around the coffee cup. In all of the three methods we use, there's also forced convection. That's when an outside source is causing a movement in the fluid. So we do that by stirring, by blowing, and by dropping liquid in the coffee. And the last mechanism of heat transfer is conduction. It's simply when two materials touch and thereby transfers heat. Here I'm showing two different materials. Left material conducts the heat well and the right material doesn't. I'm telling you this because I want to show this example by XM Demo, where he put an ice cube on some wood and he put an ice cube on some metal. And because the metal conducts the heat very well, it will melt much faster than the ice cube on the wood. I ask some of my science YouTube friends to also guess what is fastest. Here's what they have to say. Ah, yes. This question has been burning my esophagus for years. I predict that stirring the coffee with a spoon will cool it faster. Can't wait to see your research. So my guess is that blowing on the coffee will be the fastest way to cool it down, and here's why. Bernoulli's principle tells us that as a fluid's velocity increases, its pressure will decrease. When we blow on the coffee, we're lowering the pressure of the air right above the liquid. This should mean that it's more likely that higher energy particles leave the coffee, cooling it down by evaporation. On top of that, we'll be cooling the top levels of the coffee, but not the bottom, which should also increase convection, cooling the coffee even more efficiently. Thank you so much for the input, guys. Now I think we're ready to see what will be best. So let's get some hype music going. Three cooling methods. Only one will prevail. Did you just blow for 20 minutes straight? Yes. Okay, so let me conclude very anticlimactically that it is way better to blow. 
as you can see. I'll go through quickly why it is faster. So first, all three cooling methods are somewhat alike. They all distribute the coffee around in the cup and they all provide a bigger surface area for the coffee to evaporate on. But blowing is different, as SAP Physics point out as well. So in addition to temporarily lowering the pressure, when you blow, you are blowing away hot air molecules and you are blowing away air with a very high humidity. And so you are replacing them with dry and colder air. Now the coffee can evaporate much more because the air isn't saturated with water anymore. And that's why it's faster. I want to thank my Patreon supporters for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to see more physics videos from me, you can become my Patreon as well. It makes a huge difference if you buy me a cup of coffee for each video I make, and you can cancel anytime. This video was also brought to you by Brilliant.org. On Brilliant, you can learn science, math and computer science intuitively and fun. As an example, if you'd like to learn about everyday physics, like this video, Brilliant has a whole interactive course dedicated to the subject. Just like this video, Brilliant takes the same approach to learning. Learn through carefully thought examples with nice, clear visuals and interactive problems. What is really good about Brilliant, I think, are the guided explanation and its activity that make sure you understand the material. And if you get a question wrong in a quiz, there is an in-depth explanation for the answer. You can sign up and do a whole lot for free, but to gain access to dozens of interactive courses and the full archive of daily challenges, you can sign up through brilliant.org slash